A wife is blindsided by devastating news. Matt was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. And finds the strongest anchor to hold on to. As I was trying to just find somewhere to just have stability, I looked through scripture in particular and found over and over again, God's steadfast love to his people. Lauren Chandler talks about that steadfast love and her husband's miraculous healing on today's 700 Club Interactive. Good morning and welcome to the show. Before we get to that story, we wanna talk about watching television as a family. A recent study found positive results for families that use media such as TV, movies, internet. It found that families who watch TV together become more informed, connect and laugh more, have deeper family discussions. And viewing media as a family seems to be a wonderful way to bond. Well, television can also be an effective tool for improving social and emotional skills in younger children. But today, parents have to be choosy because finding family-friendly shows to watch is really a challenge. And even you could say it's somewhat impossible. I'm going uh, with that. And, <laughs> yes. You know, we, we've isolated <laughs> in our house. We've isolated some shows that we can uh, watch together. But let's take a survey of some of the, the current ones. And the, one of the most popular television shows out there, it's out on HBO, it's called Game of Thrones. It's the most popular show in the world and the most pirated show ever. Here's a short clip. Every one of us is poor and powerless, yet we can overthrow an empire. You're in the great game now, and the great game is terrifying. Order your man to step aside or there will be violence. I choose violence. Well, I actually watched one episode, partial episode. Uh, I had to turn it off. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. stay with it. And it was like, nah, there's no way. It was one of those free weekends the cable company offered. I, d I don't get HBO at home because I don't want that. I know they're going to cross certain boundaries. Don't want that with, yeah. with my kids. Wow. And uh, they had a free weekend, so let's see what the buzz is all about. Watch one show and said, nope, can't do it. Uh, now, it seems to get a lot of clit critical acclaim. It's gotten 26 Emmy aw Awards, but talk about violent. What's the draw? Talk do about you think? sexual. I mean, it. it I mean, I, I get that there is a, a basic theme to each one, but after a while, it's pretty repetitive. You know, we we do immoral things, we cuss, and then we die. You know, <laughs> I mean, it just goes on and on and on, and it's very we have visual. lots of lots of wars. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I mean, why is that attractive to people? Do you think it's? Um, I really don't know, because again, I watched half of one episode, so I can't tell you what the allure is. Uh, people talk on the, the fan sites about the wonderful plots and how interesting it is, how involving it is. Uh, I do know that when you create <coughs> these worlds uh, that are immersive, and whether that's uh, Star Trek or Star Wars or these universes, you get a fan base that just wants to live there, and so they'll they'll watch literally every episode you, you put out because they're, they're so enchanted by it this imaginary world. I, I guess so. I just can't imagine watching something like that and wanting to live there. I mean, not very many people live there for very long <laughs> well, in any of those Lots of people die there. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, uh, at least in the world I grew up in, if it was paid cable, you sort of expect it, it would cross uh, certain lines. But now we're seeing it on basic cable. Yeah. And there's a very popular show called The Americans. It's the most watched show in the on its channel in FX history. Here's a clip of that show. The operation is what's crucial because what we do is for the good of the many. Don't let your conscience get us killed. Well, that's a show I actually have watched. I find the, the plot very I like uh, to watch how other people put together scripts mm -hmm. and script ideas. And here you're going to take two KGB agents who are doing deep cover in the United States, and how are you going to make them likable? Yeah. How are you going to get an audience in America to identify with, with them? 
And I found that interesting. At the same time, boy, have they ever crossed the line in terms of basic cable. Do you think you have to? And I to could not today? watch that show with my family. Do you think you have to cross the line for things to be, to hold viewers? I mean, to make them come back again and again and again? I mean, if, if there's that much intrigue, why couldn't you just go with the intrigue? Well, I would have preferred it. Yeah. Um, I think in the minds of Hollywood executives, that if you're not pushing that envelope and, mm -hmm. and they've bought into, well, it's all part of our artistic expression and, and why shouldn't we show it? Um, but it, I don't think it gets you any more viewers. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, certainly doesn't get you uh, more viewers in my household. And, it, and I, I wonder, have, has it become so corrosive and such a strong influence in our culture? Uh, you could literally say Americans are, are porn saturated. Yeah. And why bring that into basic cable? Why bring that into to broadcast television? Uh, and there is a very valuable benefit for families uh, watching television together. But, you know, the test yeah. is, are you uncomfortable watching it with your children? And I think the test for children of any age, uh, whether you're teenagers in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, uh, would you want to be watching this scene with your parents in the room? Yeah. And if the answer to that is no, if that would make you uncomfortable, then probably you shouldn't be watching it. Yeah, you do. You know, when, when family TV nights or family viewing happened years ago, it was around shows that really reflected you know, just the everyday life that were funny, you know, they were enjoyable to watch or inspiring or musical. I mean, there used to be just all kinds of musical programs that people, of course, television was more of a novelty than too, just sitting down to watch TV together, right. you know. Was uh, the, the whole culture coming together for particular mm -hmm. days and, and watching Happy Days, for example, and saying, okay, what, what happened on that show and are you current with it? It's become so fragmented that that is, I yeah. think gone away. Well, also, I think, you know, there used to be some sense of responsibility in in programming and writing that, you know, what would be good for our culture, for our children, for our families. Now it's kind of like all in the name of art. Mm -hmm. We're going to show the worst elements of our culture because it's real. And I wonder how much that contributes to worsening the whole culture. Well, it, when you start displaying the worst behavior patterns yeah. in human beings, I think you encourage that behavior and people will then want to imitate that behavior. Yeah. Uh, and I, there are plenty of studies that show that that's true. Um, the industry has resisted that mm -hmm. and resisted that somehow or other shows lead to more violence or if you mm -hmm. show uh, violent acts, you know, people, you know, they know that this is fantasy, it's made up and this shouldn't, just shouldn't be happening. But we've, we've seen the studies that absolutely yeah. uh, people do imitate what they see on TV. And it's been kind of a slow, gradual slide over the years, don't you think, to get yeah, to where we are today? Yeah, we're all frogs today? being boiled. Yeah, wow, <laughs> water's getting hot. That's all I have to say. Well, the average American owns four digital devices on which to consume media for themselves. And for 65% of the United States homes, that means three or more television sets per home. So does that mean everyone is watching their own thing? What do you think about that? Well, it's the phenomenon today where people come home from uh, school and parents come home from work and now everybody splits up to their own individual device to watch what, it, what their, their show. And, and I think the whole concept of gathering together mm -hmm. uh, to, to watch. Um, uh, we have a rule in our house, we only had one TV so that that wouldn't happen, but now, uh, with smartphones and tablets, yeah. it's very hard to, to police it. But if you can pick some shows, and there are, there are shows out there uh, that have good content, mm -hmm. uh, and if you find them, you can now schedule family viewing. So we don't want to just be negative. <laughs> we do have some positive tips for you. And one of them is you can check out the Parents Television Council. Their mission is to protect children and families from graphic sex, violence, profanity. They have a family guide, and you can see it now on our screen. Here's a brief summary of every television show, and the show is evaluated on the basis of its suitability of content for viewers of all ages and not on its artistic merits. Uh, if you want more information, all you have to do is go to parentstv.org.
Plugged In is another great site. It's an America or an entertainment guide full of uh, reviews to make family-friendly decisions about the movies, videos, music, TV, games, and even books that you partake of. You can go to www.pluggedin.com if you'd like to learn more about that. And then there's also Common Sense Media, like that name. <laughs> this website rates, educates, and advocates for kids, for families, and schools. And they also share tips for families with younger children, things like making conversation a priority in your home and not TV, keeping the TV off during family meals. And don't use TV as a reward or punishment. This gives television, first of all, too much value. And then try not to use the television as a distraction or a babysitter. That's sometimes hard if you're home with the kids all day, 24-7. But you can find out more at commonsensemedia.org. Check it out. Well, we want to hear from you on this issue. So all you have to do is go to our Facebook page. Uh, and look for a poll we just posted, and you can tell us how your family does moving night, movie night. Well, up next, good, clean fun for the entire family. It's just amazing. It tells you about the characters, the artifacts, the games are awesome. Meet the Olsen family and see how Superbook is bringing them all together right after this. Superbook is bringing the stories of the Bible to the children of the world, one family at a time. You're about to meet a family that's creating their own Superbook legacy. Matt Olson and his six brothers were raised with the original Superbook series, and now a new generation of Olsons is following in their footsteps. Take a look. Grandma Olson knows how to throw a fun party for her grandkids pop a little popcorn and play an episode of Superbook. Here we go. I get really excited to come over and watch Superbook. It is so good to have you home. I see my grandchildren smiling and laughing, totally involved with the stories. Yeah, it makes the Bible come alive. Like I can really feel it. Like, oh, what's next, what's next? And I just want to learn a lot. You can look up what Superbook movie you're going to be watching. You can just open it and follow along. It would be exactly true with the Bible. That's something Grandma Olson's son, Matt, loves about Superbook. He and his six brothers were raised on the original series. Studying the Bible myself, I, I see things on the screen. I'm like, hey, that is in the Bible. And they're actually accurately portraying the stories and, and some of the even the minute details of what go into these stories. And it really gets my kids interested, and I love it. Today, Matt's kids have a tool he never had, the free Superbook app. It's just amazing. It tells you about the characters, the artifacts, the games are awesome. It's just an awesome place to go to on the phone. I love the Superbook app because you can go on there anytime you want to. If you're feeling afraid or something's going on. There's so much darkness in the videos and some of the things that the kids watch these days and so much violence and immorality. You have something like Superbook that brings light that would counterbalance this darkness that has come into their life. I'm very thrilled that that legacy is being passed down to the grandkids. And Grandma Olson's glad her partnership with CBN is bringing Superbook and the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. Seems to be accepted with all governments, even those that you think would not accept it, they're accepting Superbook. And this will bring a lot of kids into the kingdom, seeing these stories when they're little. Plus, it'll help them when they're older. They'll remember these things that they learned, where they can trust their Heavenly Father to take care of them, to lead them. Just one question. Um, do you know when they're going to make their next Superbook movie? Family fun for all generations, and you're a part of it when you join the Superbook DVD Club. Right now, we're in 38 languages. By the end of this year, we'll be in 50 languages. And there's the broadcast map showing the number of places where we're broadcasting the languages that we're broadcasting in. Uh, we're hearing great stories coming out of India from our broadcast in Hindi, uh, the broadcast in Tagalog in the Philippines, Bahasa Indonesian. And you're a part of all of it because when you join the Superbook DVD Club, your gift goes into the production costs, the translation costs, the distribution costs. 
to get the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. So if you want to join, you want to be a part of it, all you have to do is call us, 888-777-1999. Now the gift is $25, and so for a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you not just one copy, but three copies of the latest episode. It's the story of David and Saul. So you can be a part of sharing these wonderful stories with your family, uh, maybe your church or Christian school. You get three copies, so you can keep one and share two with others. And every time a new episode comes out, you'll be first in line to get it. So join the club. Be a part of it. It's just $25. Call us, 888-777-1999. Terry? Well, coming up, a wife and mother is blindsided by devastating news. And that was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. Lauren Chandler shares how she survived her husband's diagnosis right after this. Lauren Chandler is a pastor's wife and she's the mom of three children. One day in 2009, her husband unexpectedly collapsed on the living room floor and her life was forever changed. Lauren Chandler remembers the exact moment her life changed. Um, Matt was diagnosed with a stage three brain cancer. As I was trying to just find somewhere to just have stability, I looked through scripture in particular and found over and over again, God's steadfast love to his people. In her book, Steadfast Love, Lauren shares what she uses as an anchor during times of trouble and throws us the life preserver we'll need to weather any storm. Joining us now is Lauren Chandler. Lauren, welcome. It's nice to have you with us today. So glad to be here. Thank you. You know, we live in such a crazy world and mm. there's so much turmoil and up and down. I love the fact that your book, Steadfast Love, has mm. an anchor on the cover yes. because we need that anchor of Christ. Tell me what happened on the, the Thanksgiving day of 2009 when your life really tipped over. Right. I mean, it started like any other, just getting ready to make dishes to take to my mom's house for dinner that that day and um, Matt uh, was in the living room with the uh, with the kids. Our kids were six, four, and six months Good at that time. Grief. And all of a sudden I hear this commotion from right next door and I go in to see what's going on. I see my kids, but I don't see Matt. And uh, I, I turn the corner around the couch and I see he's in the midst of a yeah. grand mal seizure. So that was the beginning, but then there was the diagnosis. Yes. Tell us about that. So um, they ran some tests, saw that he had a mass in his right frontal lobe, and he actually went into surgery only a week later from wow. that seizure. And um, they discovered that the tumor was in fact malignant. It was uh, anaplastic oligodendroglioma is the fancy name that I'd rather not know yeah. that yes. word, yeah. but now I do. You know, I think we automatically think when something like this happens that it's nothing but a disaster, mm -hmm. that it's nothing but uprooting our lives and turmoil and chaos right. and just all that comes into your heart and mind at that time. But in fact, what you write about in the book is how God used all of that to teach you more about who He was. Yes. I mean, you think about Jesus taking His disciples yeah. into His boat, you know, into the boat, knowing that a storm was awaiting them. So yeah. I knew that not only is He Lord in the storm, He's there, you know, to calm the waves yeah. and to hush the sea, but He's also Lord over the storm. So He knew, taking His disciples into that boat, that there would be a storm, but He also yeah. knew He would deliver them to the exactly. other side. And I think that's true even now where um, He is still Lord over the storm, even though yeah. it feels so out of control. Um, that's one, one thing that anchored me was mm -hmm. that He has a love for me that even though He knows a storm is coming, He will be the stability and yeah. Lord over the storm and in the storm. Now, what made you and Matt in the midst of all of this mm -hmm. craziness believe for a healing? Um, you know, I think God is able, it says that, you know, to ask Him, ask yeah. Him for healing, ask for the elders to come and to pray, and that's what we did, and I believe He is able to heal. And um, He also kind of spoke really, you know, through His Holy Spirit just quietly to Matt one day when he was in the midst of his treatment, and um, he was just laying on the bathroom floor. He felt in his spirit just the Lord say, this is not a, an illness unto death. Mm -hmm. And so 
we said, God, we want to believe that you're able and you're yeah. willing to heal him. We're asking for your for a miracle, yeah. but even if you don't. So just kind of like Meshach, mm -hmm. Shadrach, and Abednego, when they're talking to King Nebuchadnezzar, yes. it's like, God, he will deliver us. And even if he doesn't, we still won't bow down. And and I think the same was true for us, that God, we're asking you for this. We believe yeah. you will, but even if you don't, we trust that you're good mm -hmm. and you have what's best for us. What do you want people who read your book, Steadfast Love, to take away? What's the takeaway gift of that at the end? that God is who He says He is, and He yeah. will do what He says He will do, that He has steadfast love for His people, that no matter what comes into our lives, if we would look to Him, if we would cry out to Him, He would answer and yeah. deliver us. Tell us about Matt today. How's he doing? He is great. He's cancer-free, has been uh, ever since the surgery. And, and the miracle of that mm -hmm. is that really when there's cancer in the brain, there isn't really a cure no. for it. They would, say that, they would say he's never ultimately in remission, that it will come back, but we're asking the Lord to continue to yeah. hold that back and, and to bring healing. Yeah. It's so interesting also that one of God's promises is that what the enemy meant for evil, mm. he will work to good. You've surely seen that in your own life, haven't you? I have. And what's interesting is um, the week before Matt's seizure, I just had opened the Bible up in my time with him, and it just kind of fell open to Job 1. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, yeah. God, what do you have planned? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, but it, what I, I took from that was that um, the enemy, the accuser, Satan, had to ask God permission to sift Job. Yeah. And so I knew that anything would, that came through God's hand, He would give me the grace to endure, mm -hmm. that He would be there. And that's my prayer, because I know storms aren't over for us, for our family, for me. And my prayer is that, God, would you continue yeah. to be faithful and steadfast, and may I continue to trust mm -hmm. you no matter what. Wonderful word. Life is full of storms for all of us. And if you'd like to learn more about Lauren and Matt's story, the book is called Steadfast Love. If you'd like to learn more about hanging on when the whole world around you is spinning, it's a great book available where books are sold. Thank you so much. Thank you great for to have having you with me. us. Glad uh -huh. to be here. Gordon? Well, still to come, we'll be praying for you. But first, a woman fights breast cancer without chemo, and not everyone is thrilled. I've had people actually yell at me and tell me I was crazy. What are you doing? And I said, I know I'm doing the right thing. See how she was able to fight and win. That's next when we come back. Every year, more than 200,000 American women are diagnosed with breast cancer. In 2009, Venus DeMarco was one of them. And while many women in her situ situation would turn to surgery or chemotherapy, Venus did not. And here's what she did instead. I noticed this lump in my breast, and it was very big, but I just ignored it for a while. But then it was very painful. I knew something was wrong. When Venus DeMarco finally had the courage to go to the doctor, she wasn't surprised when doctors detected breast cancer. You're angry at your body. You're angry at God. You don't know what happened. Why? You know, why? Overwhelmed and frightened, Venus prayed. And the fear would grip you. I mean, sometimes I would just be on my face. <laughs> just crying, like, what is happening, you know? I mean, I was so scared, but I had to get over the fear because I wanted to live. Doctors advised her to have surgery and start chemo. But Venus declined. Instead, she relied on God's healing power. I knew right away I was not going to have a double mastectomy. I knew I wasn't going to have chemo. I knew right away. Um, it was just put on my heart. She started a regimen of healthy eating and exercise. Friends and family had mixed reactions. People were excited. I think they wanted to see somebody do this. And, and not do it with chemo and radiation and surgery. They wanted to see somebody not get sick before they got better. Then there were the people who were afraid. I've had people actually yell at me, really yell at me on the phone and tell me I was crazy. What are you doing? And I said, I know I'm doing the right thing. I know. With all my heart, I know. Venus prayed for healing, sometimes for hours at a time. I stood on the Word. I took the Bible 
literally, that said, by his stripes you were healed. And I kept saying, well, if he said that and we believe this book, then it has to be true. After two years, Venus received some great news. I got a blood test and there was no cancer in my body. I just wanted to praise God. That's all I wanted to do, just praise God. Just like, wow, thank you, God. When you went to Calvary, when you shed your blood, it was for me and I believed it. And, it, and he was showing me every minute, every day. But I was so happy I could tell people, I'm okay. Venus has a special message for anyone battling cancer. When disease comes onto your body, remember that Jesus is the healer. Everything else can be a bonus, but Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Don't, don't ignore what doctors tell you. Uh, do, God heals through doctors. But if he's speaking to you, if he's revealing his healing power, follow what he says and let him be the guide. We've gotten some prayer requests in. We've got one from Robert asking for prayer for his daughter, Caitlin. And she's been dealing with pelvic and abdominal pain that comes and goes and doctors can't seem to find the problem. And then Samantha writes in, please pray for my husband mm. who has Alzheimer's and pray for my mouth and jaw. It's been in pain for almost a year. So let's lift these up to the Lord. Lord, we, we just pray for Caitlin right now. And we just ask that you would remove all pain from her body, from her abdomen, from her pelvis. Let all that pain go away now in Jesus name. And for Samantha's husband, we just ask for healing for his Alzheimer's. And right now into that jaw and into that mouth, let there be no more pain, no more pain. I don't know if this is for her or not, but if you've got pain right now in your right jaw uh, and it's very difficult for you to open your jaw, just reach your hand up and touch it right now. And in Jesus' name, be healed and be set free. Pain be gone now in the name of of Jesus. Amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 888-777-1999. We leave you this word, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. God bless you. We'll see you again.